It's Charlie from Daily Motor. Welcome to our live drive of the 2021 Volkswagen Passat. Now, if you're joining in live, be sure to hit us up in the chat. We'll be checking those here in a few minutes and answering all of your questions and anything you'd like to know or see with Volkswagen's family sedan. If you're watching after the fact and you want to join in live next time, hit that subscribe button, sign up for notifications to see when we're going to go live. Typically, it's Tuesdays and Fridays, about 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So let's jump right into it. We've got the R-Line Sat. So it's the top trim. They've got three trims now. I think it's the S, SC, and R-Line. I don't know what happened to SEL, but I guess they said that's for the birds. And they wanted R-Line to be all cool, sporty, and feature-packed. But the weird thing is with the Passat is it's still decently priced. This one's coming in about $31,000. And that's a good chunk of change cheaper than the top level trims of the other sedans we've had recently. The Honda Accord, Hyundai Sonata. What else have we driven? Um, I feel like there's probably another one. We haven't had a Camry in a while, actually. But uh, yeah. yeah, all of those really get more expensive. And the Passat sort of leaves the more luxury side of the sedan game to the RTL, which is based off the same platform, but more of a premium product. This is a little bit more, well, not basic but it's also not luxurious so we're gonna take a look around the outside hop in see what you all are talking about in the chat what you all think about the Passat and talk about what sort of features it has so Alyssa who's behind the camera is actually a previous owner of a Volkswagen Passat 2013 mm -hmm. so what do you think of this new one this is actually a whole generation newer than yours mm -hmm. and a little bit of facelift as well so what do you think I like that they kept the original or at least original to my car, the uh, the headlights here, mm. and the grill, and your VW badge in the front. But they added um, just a few other lines in it. I know the newer ones had these lines in the hood too, so you're able to discern the old shots from the new ones. But it does look, you know, a little bit more aggressive. And I can't really remember exactly what is different from what I have. I think this part of this lower grill is a little bit more new but yeah, yeah. yours is kind of like a plain bowl of vanilla ice cream yeah. this is like vanilla ice cream with some uh, cracked peanuts on top and maybe some chocolate syrup right you've got the chrome bits and the dark piano blacks and the nice wheels Volkswagen's been doing a cool job with wheels lately their wheels are nice yeah yeah these tires have already been put through a little bit of love even though this doesn't have too many miles on it yet and coming around the back you've got a nice little black deck lid lip spoiler i like the lettering for passat back here that part is also new mm -hmm. newer anyways they yeah just started doing that in 2020 yeah yeah well passat's been around a long time this is the eighth generation and each each time they just kind of tweak little things yep. and i like that even though there are eight generations they keep it the same. I mean, yeah. you're able to recognize a Passat from seven, eight years ago mm -hmm. as what it is. Yeah. I, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. They kept the integrity of the Passat. Oh, you've got fake dual exhaust ports. They're so fake, in fact, that look, it does, it's not even a hole. Really? It's just black plastic <laughs> inside there. So the, the exhaust pipe itself is way underneath buried somewhere, but <laughs> they just made it look like there's exhaust ports. And yes, it does not have the cool golf style badge opening. You or just, Beetle. Yeah. Beetle does that too. Right, you just reach up and get in trunk. The trunk is still as spacious as I remember it to be. Yeah, Passats have good trunk space. Very basic though, no sorts of hooks. Right. But the seats fold, there's a spare tire under there, which is good. All your jacks and... Mm -hmm. In fact, that might, is that a compact spare? It's hard. It yeah, really, yeah, I mean, it's compact. Small anyway. Yeah, it's small. Nah, it's not a full size, but you do at least have a handle to pull down from, which is good. Oh. But you still gotta kinda slam it from the outside. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right, well, should we meet in the back? Yeah. Please excuse the wind. It's a nice, warm, windy day here in Southeastern Michigan. <sighs> they did not change a single thing back here, except this, I mean, compa I'm comparing this to my 2013. That's eight years ago. I understand there is going to be a huge difference between that and this one, and they did the refresh in 2020, so... A light refresh 2020, but a, a, a different generation starting in 2015, but you're right, right, it still isn't very different back here. Right. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you got you got your core basics, and and in some ways, it's like if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's still as spacious as ever back here, which is very nice. Mm -hmm. uh, my car didn't have these uh, air vents back here. I really don't think, and it especially didn't have USB right. A's. Yep. All right, what do we got going on in the old chat room? Say hello to Maron. Hey, Maron. And Andrew the Panda. Hey, Panda. Uh, Jocelyn Newman is asking if it does the launch control. No, it does not have launch control. You can brake torque it because it's just a conventional six speed automatic transmission. And if we hit $10 in total donations, we'll do some zero to 60s and 60 to zeros. But uh, no, no drive modes even in this car. Still pretty simple. Yeah. Andrew says, nice car. Mm hmm. And hello, NC Styles. Hey, and NC Styles. Hello, Jocelyn. She says, what's up, Alyssa? Hey, hey. And NC Styles says, nice color. It must look great at night. It does. You know, it's a handsome color. It's mm -hmm. probably not. It's a little boring for my taste. I know there are more beautiful and cooler mm -hmm. colors out there, but it's yeah. it's mature. That's the thing with the Passat, and that's one something that appealed to you when you bought yours. It's a mature car. It really is. My the color of my car was like a nice uh, metallic silver. This is a really dark gray metallic. Um, so it is very mature. And one of the things I realized with mine is I was in. I was invisible on the road. I could be going very fast speeds <laughs> on the highway and no one would notice me. And that was one of the things I really liked about it. So you're still going to get that same kind of um, effect, I think, with even this color of this car. And that's kind of why people buy these colors. They mm -hmm. don't want to be noticed all that much on the road. They don't want to get hit because you don't see them, but um, yeah. they want to be there but not seen. Someone, oh, I was reading that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, Josh asked, materials quality versus Accord. And I'd be interested to hear your initial take on that mm. first. Because that Accord we had last week, it felt nice inside. I need to remember that one actually. Did that one have the Alcantara or no? No, that was the one with like the kind of. Uh, that had that woven soft yeah. material. Mm -hmm. This is. Um, a black pleather mm -hmm. and it honestly has not changed since my car um, I know they make them in cloth and I don't think they make them in any other pleather color other than black you might be able to get a tan I'm not sure I, I don't know either yeah. but I know they make them in cloth and I know mm -hmm. they make them in this black pleather um, it's very hot it's ridiculously horribly hot in the summer <laughs> so I would prefer to do the Accord materials on the inside on the seats because they have the, that nice soft satiny woven material on uh, the seat Breathe itself. a little better. It's probably very breathable. I know for a fact this um, material on the seats, they are excruciatingly hot until you can cool your car down in the summertime. And God forbid you wear shorts, <laughs> you know, above your knees. <laughs> right. Other than that, and we'll talk a little bit more when we get in the front seat. I think the materials are pretty up to par with the Accord, but I would put the Accord at like a 9 out of 10 for this class. Yeah. And this maybe more like a 7.5 or an 8. Mm -hmm. You can tell Volkswagen has been dropping a bit in quality, almost intentionally lately. There's certain bits that need to be a little cheaper after the whole Dieselgate scandal. They've had to save money, right. had to cut costs. Mm -hmm. The leathers, you know, the seating materials, that all still feels good and nice. But things like like switches, window switches are still decent. The handles just kind of feel plasticky. Listen to this. That's pretty solid, but a little bit of a tin. You know, There's a tinny sound there. when you shut it. It's 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 decent. It's not uh, it's not outstanding, but it's decent. I think the Accord leads the class for just how premium everything is. Every single button, switch, mm -hmm. handle, yeah. So a little bit below right. the Accord. Right. How, uh, what sort of fuel economy on the highway? This actually achieved 40 miles per gallon on our highway fuel economy. No, 41 miles per gallon on our highway yeah. fuel economy in the test. And because of its 18.6 gallon fuel tank, that came out to 760 miles of range on the highway. So good old highway cruiser. That's pretty good. Yeah, the gas tank I had on mine was 16 gallons. Okay. Yeah, yeah it still could go a still long so time. Much. Yeah. yeah. Uh, NC Styles, this reminds me of an Audi. Yeah, I, there it's definitely that to it. Yeah, mm -hmm. Family resemblance. Ron wants his favorite tests. We will test for the uh, soft limiter and the 
gear holding. I don't know about the soft limiter, but I do know it does not hold gears. Okay. Yep, so it'll still shift for you even in manual mode. And Jerry says, man, now I want one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Jerry, it's, it's good, but this, if you were buying new, you could probably get an awesome deal on one of these, but unless you're gonna put like an APR tune on it and <laughs> I don't know. I don't even think you can still get a manual. Someone, someone will know in the chat. But uh, I, I would probably put my money elsewhere if I were buying new. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to know how reliable and durable these cars are. Cause yeah. Hear a lot. I mean, I didn't have any issues with mine, and, mm -hmm. I, and I'm sorry if it sounds repetitive <laughs> when I keep talking about my Passat, but uh -huh. um, I never had any issues with mine. I owned it for three years, uh, but there were some friends that we know that had a Passat, mm -hmm. they had terrible time, a terrible time with it, same year, same color even as mine. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd like to know, I mean, if you were, if we are comparing this to a Honda Accord and you're talking about Honda's reliability, right. durability, consistency, I'd like to see how the 2021 Passat compares yeah to something like that yeah. this little two liter should be fairly reliable it's a six-speed automatic transmission very straightforward very straightforward small engine so in theory there really shouldn't be too much to go wrong with this but let's hop in the front andrew the panda recommended starting the car with the hood open so oh, let's remember to do that idea. I like yeah that. yep so let's uh let's do that and we'll get on the road do a little bit of driving and then talk more about the front materials and interior and everything like that it's a window thing. oh yeah the doors sound different when the windows are open that's not really a fair comparison do you want me to start it uh sure let me get the hood open it's super easy to do with one hand as i found out but you do still have to uh, put in a manual hood strut just see this little two liter it does have a little bit of plastic on top all right, go ahead and start it up. You can see it rattle to life and then settle right down. It's a pretty benign engine, something like 200 pound feet of torque, 174 horse. It gets the job done. I honestly think this is about the perfect amount of horsepower for a family sedan. I think the Accord 2 liter and the Sonata N line, they just, they both had too much. At least the Sonata N line kind of had the the go fast bits to go along with it but i think the accord and the v6 camry just have too much power i think this is a pretty good amount yeah cool. let you pick this all right here we go all right something that's surprising but also kind of makes sense when you remember that this car hasn't been redesigned in uh, a long time, since 2015, which is a while in automotive years, <laughs> is things are pretty basic. If you take a look at this infotainment screen, I mean, this doesn't look too far off of your system that was in your 2013 Passat. No. The fonts are similar. The navigation actually looks okay, but like when you're on Tiny. radio, I mean, look at all that. Compared to what we've been in recently, it's a small screen. It's very outdated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the response times, of course, are going to be really out, uh, laggy too. No, actually the opposite. This, um, it's a fairly responsive screen. I was, I was oh, wow. surprised by it while testing everything. The refresh rate is actually quite good. So even though everything looks simple, it's, it's a pretty competent system. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Get some air conditioning going. Yeah, First time we've right. had to do that in a live drive in a while. Yeah, guys, it's 79 inside this car. Whew. <laughs> All right. Any more comments? Yes, we do. Um, now, Joshua was wondering how this Passat compares to the Arteon. I said it a little bit at the beginning, but I'll yep. say it a few more times throughout the drive. This is definitely the more bare bones option from Volkswagen in the family sedan department. And the Arteon is more pushing luxury. Arteon's more of a competitor against things like the Mazda 6, the top level Accord, things okay. like that. This, I mean, this is the top level model and we're looking at $31,000. You don't have your cooled seats. You don't have a heated steering wheel. Mm -hmm. uh, very basic looking uh, infotainment, just the Fender nine speaker audio system, which is okay. So the Arteon looks more attractive both inside and out and feels more premium inside. Mm -hmm. I don't think I would pay 45 grand for an Arteon, but that's me. Gotcha. Okay. Huh. 
NC Style says, I'm a Mazda guy, guy looking forward to the CX-30 after my lease matures on the CX-5 at the end of the year. I'm curious to know why you're going with the CX-30 after already owning a CX-5. Do you not need space of the CX-5? Because to me, the CX-30 is a little cramped and I would get the CX-5, but right. I mean, the CX-30 feels a little nicer. It's a little newer, a little more nimble, but I just wouldn't give up the space. But again, it's just me. Right. Also, we almost had a Mazda 6 Carbon Edition booked for later on this year, but we changed it to something else, but we'll probably be getting that at some point. So it'll be a nice little sedan comparison too. That's Mazda's version of this. Okay, nice. Yeah. He's also asking what's better, in your opinion, Volkswagen or Mazda? And you're gonna say Mazda, 100%. I would, yeah, I'd say Mazda. That being said though, if I were gonna buy a new car tomorrow, the ID4? No, the uh, GTI would be right up there near the top. Oh, I forgot about the GTI. Yeah, and and I yeah I'd pick a GTI over over the Mazda three. So when we first started talking about selling my Passat, uh, Charlie was trying to convince me, albeit not be, not very hard, to get a GTI in yeah. manual. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was like, your next progression will obviously be something like a, a nice GTI Rabbit or something. But yeah. Then we got a Tesla. So. Yep. And then I'll talk about <laughs> further Volkswagen cars was over. Yes, exactly. Yep. So, like I was saying earlier, it's just, just a nice simple formula of a six-speed automatic and a two-liter turbo. It just gets up and goes. It doesn't encourage you to do any uh, super fun, playful sort of driving, but 95%, mm -hmm. probably more like 99% of people with family sedans are not using it for playful driving. So at least the Passat comes by itself honestly. It's not full of sport modes and, and all these sorts of things. I, to be honest, can't even figure out a way to turn off the traction control. <laughs> That's how unassuming and just boring this car is. Basic. Yeah, but some it's people want basic. boring. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, here's your drive mode. S. That's it. And all that does is pretty much make it so the transmission downshifts sooner. neutral chassis but the tires give up quick yeah you can feel that mm -hmm. <laughs> nc style says i have a mortgage now and i needed to trim off the fat also the cx5 doesn't have the new redesigned interior yeah all right that's funny huh? ironically if you really needed to trim off the fat you'd just probably hold on to your cx5 when you like buy the lease out and then uh hold on to it instead of leasing a new car but <laughs> I don't know. To each his and her own right. financial decisions. Yeah. Andrew the Panda is asking uh, how this car compares to the Kia K5. Oh yeah, I always forget about the K5 because I don't like it. <laughs> the K5 is like the opposite of this car. The Passat, uh -huh, under, right. but the Passat's just like, this is what you get. It's just very simple. Here you go. You're getting a family sedan that does, gets the job done and it sort of under promises and over delivers. K5 is the opposite. It looks all aggressive and it's like, grr, look at me. And then you're like, oh, I'm just in a Kia Optima at the end of the day. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I, I respect the Passat more than the K5. I didn't, I didn't <laughs> care for the K5. It's all about that principle. Exactly. The honesty. Yes. The honesty behind the wheel and in front of the car, too. Right. Mm -hmm. So, for any of you tuning in recently, we're out driving and walking around and checking out the new 2021 Passat R line. Uh, if you like what you see and you want to drop us a donation, hit us up in the chat. We'll give a shout out and a big thank you for anyone donating, helping fill up the gas tank, and still still recuperating from the pain of last week's uh, and the week before when we're running supercharged V8s around and chugging gas that way. Um, and if we reach ten dollars of total donations, we'll do some zero to sixty testing, sixty to zero, everything like that. But we're gonna drive around some more. We'll put Alyssa behind the wheel. She's a previous Passat owner talk about that some more and yeah anything you'd like to know or see let us know mm. let's put it into manual mode real quick we'll go down into first gear and we'll show moran how it still shifts yep. oh, so there it is. it's not gonna hold gears but again it's it's not it's an honest car it's not it's like i don't even think there should be paddle shifters here i don't know why there are <laughs> Maybe because it's the R line. Interesting. 
Joshua is asking uh, if the new Passat would be better with the VR6. Oh, of course. Yeah, everything would be better with the VR6. What is a VR6? Uh, it's an old V6 engine that Volkswagen, I don't think they still use it really, but it's just a V6. Oh, yeah. okay. Even Alyssa's car had the inline five and that thing sounded cool. It sounded like a mini R8, but this, <laughs> this has no character to it. But let's this test it out nonetheless. Cool. Again, very predictable. Not exciting, yeah. but predictable. I knew exactly. I started to hear the tire squeal, and then it was like, okay, here we are. We're good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm. I'm usually very nervous when we go around that ramp because I know you're just going to go it as fast as you can around it in everything that we have. Uh, and maybe it's because I know what this car is like and I know what it's going to be so I wasn't worried about it at all. But nothing about it feels twitchy or anything. It's a very planted car and you can probably subtly tell that even from the from the passenger seat. I mean, yeah. every, everything feels predictable. Yeah. It's a predictable one thing I'll be interested to see what you think, the steering is quite light and that's unlike your oh. Passat. Your Passat had a fairly hefty steering It feel. really did have a very heavy, and I like that a lot. It actually right. got me used to heavy steering because of that. Right. It's also a very thin steering wheel, which I like. Overall, the wheel has a nice feel to it. The Topher is asking if uh, you missed the five-cylinder. Is yeah. he asking me? I don't know. Well, you're welcome to answer too. But yeah, we were just talking about that. I'm not sure when he tuned in, but definitely, okay. definitely missed the five cylinder. Because at least five cylinder, even though it didn't make a ton of power, it sounded cool. So when you were revving it out, it sounded neat. That's what mine had, right? Yeah. 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 I, I actually was really surprised when we got in this and it started making sounds that seems a little bit more high pitched than my car was. A little bit. Yep. Mine was a little bit gruntier. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Yours had a growl. This thing just kind yeah. of purrs up to yeah. red line. Yep. Jerry Paul says, seems like a lot of road noise, or is it our Great Michigan Roads? That was a that was a um, concrete highway we were on. This thing registered 71 decibels on our test, which is not super scientific, but it is nonetheless a test. And that's about middle mid-range. It's mid to lower range for family sedans. It's not too bad. Okay. Yeah, it's average. Again, predictable. Uh, what safety and driver assistance are offered on this? I don't know exactly what's in the full suite, but I know there's some sort of automatic emergency braking. I do know there's a very rudimentary uh, lane keeping system as well, so I think we could probably trigger it right now if I kind of go that way and don't touch the wheel. Is it going to pull back? I don't even... It's so subtle that you don't really even really know when it's doing it. It's, it just kind of helps a little. Interesting. Yeah. Um, and there's adaptive cruise control, but it's too conservative. Even on the closest following setting, it's, it keeps you too far away from the car in front of you. So they're there. I you, Someone would have to look at a spec sheet to really see everything it's got. Would it have on that Mon? Okay. Would it have it on that Mon Roni? Yeah, it probably would, yep. Okay, we can look at that. Yep. We'll come to a stop here soon and we can take a big old peek see at that. Overall, it rides decently well, though. These are we like testing around these roads because, especially this section we're coming up to is fairly beat up. Yeah. Got some good whoops and broken pavement, and nothing's coming through the cabin harsh. It's a fairly long wheelbase. It just kind of absorbs things. It's a little boaty. A little yeah. boaty, yeah. yeah. And it's actually fairly well isolated. There aren't any creaks or rattles or or noises over the bumps, which is remarkable because. Topher and I have always joked that every Volkswagen we get rattles somewhere, and <laughs> this is actually very well isolated. Nice. Cool. Let's see. Uh, Veron is asking, uh, just showing you how uh, bumpy these roads are. Veron's asking uh, which one you would choose a base model 21 Mercedes E350 or the 2021 fully loaded Passat? Come on, Veron. You know that's not even a, a question. Of course, the E classes are very different, very different classes. That's like a that's like a sixty thousand dollar car versus a thirty thousand dollar car. Oh well, jeez. Yeah, no, the I mean the E class is one of my favorite cars, so you gotta go E class. Okay. 
Yeah, that was a loaded question then. <laughs> ah, Audi fanboy is asking if this is a nice first car for a teenager. Yeah, you'd be fairly, you'd be lucky if you had this as a as a first car for a teenager. Yeah. It's gonna be safe. It's you're not gonna be able to get yourself in a bunch of trouble. I'm I'm a big advocate for front wheel drive cars for a teenager's first car. Um, I think my longevity was secured by me having a front wheel drive car as my first two cars actually, mm -hmm. three. Um, yeah, no, it'd be fine. It'd be a fine first car if if someone's willing to pay that money. Yeah. Yeah, but you, yeah, can, you got Bluetooth, kid. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. Right. Um, okay sound system. It would be a very classy teenager, I, I would think. Yeah. yeah. Probably grow into a nice adult. Right. <laughs> NC Style says he's currently paying $565 a month on the CX-5, and the CX-30 would be $250 a month. Fair enough. So, yeah, that, yeah. Is, that is a lot less. Okay. Yeah, well, you know, we're fans of the CX-30 around here. The Topher is, is an owner. And we've been big fans. I well, love that car. Yeah. yeah. The one thing I will say is don't bother with the turbo. Just get the standard base car. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Mohammed says hi. Hello, Mohammed. <laughs> Do a little bit more. Actually, I'm going to turn the car around so we can see the interior a little better. That's a good idea, too. Can I keep on reading? Yeah. Uh, cool, mm -hmm. cool, cool. Uh, NC is asking what got us into reviewing vehicles. Well, I am a big car person. Alyssa's uh, at least mildly interested and goes along with it. You know, she has by def not by default, <laughs> by association. <laughs> right, which is good because it's good to get a non-enthusiast perspective as well. Yeah. But working with the Topher and with Winding Road Magazine, got the opportunity to drive these regularly and kind of continue our passion. But I also worked for Car and Driver Magazine before this, so um, that's kind of where I got the start, and then now we're here. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, Christopher Brower is in oh, the chat. Oh, hey, Chris. He says, I'm excited to compare the driving assist with the Kia and the Hyundai. So somebody ha hasn't found a better one yet. Yeah, no, there's, I mean, this is a non-existent driving, driver's assist compared to those two. So um, you're not going to find many better than the Hyundai Kia systems. That's for sure. Mm. I think the gauges look kind of neat, though, even if the okay. center MFD is fairly basic. Let's look at these. As Alyssa's getting the Monroni out, I'm going to test the soft limiter. So Marana goes to 3,800, maybe 3,850 and holds. Hmm. Is that the same in neutral? Yep. All right, take a little peek see here. Yeah, $31,000, what do we got for safety? Forward collision warning, automatic emergency braking, blind spot monitoring, lane keeping system, automatic high beams, adaptive cruise control, rear view camera. Well, that's about it. I got I got just about all of them. Cool. <laughs> the nine speaker fender audio system is okay. It's not quite as good as the golf system, but it's not awful. It's good for easy listening. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Kuya RB is not a fan of the interior. They think it's so clinical. That's that's a way to put it. It's the German way. Look at all these straight lines. Look at how perfectly right. straight this is. Everything is just so neat and crisp and nice. I like that about it. Before they Tesla, it before Tesla, this would be considered sort of minimalist. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. And then Tesla's like, I'll show you minimalist. Right. But that's yeah, you've got flowing unbroken lines. You don't really have that kind of like big encapsule the driver sort of thing that a lot of brands have been doing lately but yeah it's all there it's all honest mm -hmm. i do think it's kind of funny they use the shifter stack in all the volkswagens every single one of these is just a blank button i don't know why it was like that in my car too yeah but well it's because they just use it that's all for the same all the cars just use the same setup and if it doesn't have features to put there it just just gets blank boys gotcha yeah okay. <laughs> Alrighty. um RV's also asking what's wrong with the 630 turbo oh it just I don't see the point of it it's like you pay more to go a little bit faster and get worse fuel economy in a smaller fuel tank or maybe like similar size fuel tank maybe uh the, the normal CX30 yeah it's not a speed demon but it's still enough power for daily driving and the turbo doesn't all of a sudden turn it into a rally car so mm -hmm. like why are you going to pay more to essentially drive the exact same and, and pay more for fuel makes sense yeah Cool. The only reason the turbo exists is because Mazda's trying to be a premium brand and they need to have a little bit more oomph for that. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. Makes sense. Okay. 
and I can't remember. Audi fanboys asking if we've tested the new Outback. Yeah. Subaru. That's what you got a ticket in. I thought it was. <laughs> I hated that car. Yeah. Hated it. I actually don't mind the Outback, but I would again get the smaller engine option. There aren't too many cars that I would opt for the larger engine. Some of them. Don't get me wrong. But yeah. most cars, pretty much any sort of commuter style car, I'm I'm gonna say why why do you need like this little tease of power when you're barely ever gonna use it? Right. Save your money and get a Miata as a second car or a motorcycle. Oh yeah, that too. Uh parts is back. Hey, hey guys. Uh do you feel the age of the gener this generation of Passat? Yes. Yeah, you do. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean it's it's refined, so that helps being a car that's been out for a while, but Things like, I mean, look down here. You got no wireless device charging yet. A single USB A port chilling out there, along with your 12 volt. So no, no USB Type C. No wireless device charging. Th this screen, even though it looks dated, actually works pretty well. So that's kind of the like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it sort of deal. It's just so small. It's yeah. ridiculously small. Yeah, like when you put it in reverse, try to get the reverse camera. You know, it's still about the same size. Something we had recently also had a small screen. What did we have last week? The one that was up here. The Accord screen, yeah, it wasn't very big. Accord? Mm -hmm. For the reverse camera, at least. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Anything yeah. else? Yeah, there's a couple others. Okay. Uh, I feel like Moran's is trying to get us to test out ridiculous things. He says, how strong is the e-brake? Well, he wants to know because it's actually an e-brake. You don't get too many uh, non, non-mechanical. That's right. Or you don't get any non-electric e-brakes. We'll, we'll try that out mm -hmm. once we're on uh, solid pavement. Right. Yeah. Can I have the water, please? Yes. You can. can actually fit a 32 ounce water bottle in the door, so that's nice. Yeah. You got a nifty little side uh, storage thing, which I've never found a use for, but it does have some coin holders. Liz, did you ever use your side? No. Okay. There are actually some bolts in it from probably uh, the license plate um, in there that would rattle around. <laughs> yeah. That probably just drove Charlie crazy. Probably. But they were in that compartment the day I bought it until the day I sold it. <laughs> I never used that. I mostly just forgot that it was there. One thing I've always liked with the Passats and a lot of other Volkswagens and Audis is to open the sunroof, you just turn this. So if you only want it halfway open, you just turn that halfway and then it goes about halfway and then you turn it a little more and it opens more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very easy way to do it. I think you can also pull it down. Well, I know you can push it up to op to put the thing up, and then you probably pull it back down to pull it. Yeah. yeah. So it's very intuitive. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people would probably be really confused by a dial, but it's, it's yeah. fine. Turn it open, turn it closed. <laughs> right. Yeah. So. Can the car drift? <laughs> I mean, probably with the e-brake. We can play around with that a little bit. But let's uh, let's do a yeah, little walk we'll around, around, and then we'll get Alyssa behind the wheel. Yeah, I'm excited to drive this. Uh, you got these R-line kick plates. Look sharp. Overall, I think it's a handsome vehicle. I think it looks good and drives decently. There's a specific type of buyer for a Passat. They don't care if it's necessarily the best on the market. They want the Passat, yeah. and they want sort of the image that goes along with that. And, I think for that, it does decently. I'd have to see what you can get on the SE model. Maybe that would be more of a value play, but at $31,000, this R line's not too bad either. You got some cool LED strips, one right there. Mm -hmm. Decent headlights. We tested on the night drive last night. Yeah. Excuse me. Gonna get situated. Yeah, it's a little door thunk. So now that the windows are up, this feels, feels and looks very solid. I think there's driver's seat memory, so you'll just have no. to erase my settings. I would be very surprised if there was. Well, I mean, it's a top level, you know? No, it's, it's still very basic. Chris Brower really did not like the Accord angle of the screen. I've never heard anyone else complain about that. It's just like, I mean, I, I recognize it. It's kind of canted down, but I've never uh, never had an issue with it. If I anything, it keeps, so keeps glare down. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, I feel like I'm gonna go for a really long drive <laughs> and just listen to Lana Del Rey the whole time because that was practically what I did 90% of the time I ever drove my car. <laughs> I'm getting like 
just cute little memory flashbacks. Ron said he hates when the power button turns with the volume knob. Is that because you get bothered by the fact that the, that the uh, actual image doesn't stay right side up? Because that's, that's the only thing I could see bad about that. How is the sound system? It's not great. I gave it about a six out of 10. Huh. Open the glove box and see what's inside. Cute. Nope. We got a nice, uh, we've got all our paperwork and then kind of a mature nice. looking Volkswagen manuals booklet. They haven't changed the key fob in eight years. Nor should they. I love the Volkswagen key fob. Switchblade. Yeah, in case you're ever getting mugged while you walk into your car. Just... <laughs> <laughs> All right, ready? Yes. Um, why? Steering? Yeah, why did they have to change that? And it is a lot thinner. Oh, it's so thin. My knuckles are touching each other and the other fingers. To be fair, I always thought your Passat steering was remarkably heavy. Like I wanted to check the power steering fluid level, but it was really hard to get to. So who knows what yours would have been like new, but yeah, <laughs> this is very light. That's fair, that's good. Calvin, we'll show the trunk again soon, but uh, it's pretty large. It's a decent size, that's for sure. NC Styles, Alyssa looks like she daily drives a Range Rover. Well, she daily drives a Tesla, so I mean, you know. I, mean, I drove that today. Right. Close. I got that battery to like 50% so today. Yeah. And it was at a full. No, it was at 85. It was at 89, but whatever. Yeah. Classic blinker sound. Yep, that's very familiar. That's like a, a, a 10 second zero. That wasn't even zero, but like that took forever to get up to, to 60. <laughs> yeah, it's slow. It's something like in the seven seconds. And, it's very but slow. But that's the thing is like, you know, when you're just driving daily, who, who cares, you know? Yeah. Uh, okay. blah, 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 blah. What drive modes are available? Literally just D and S. There are no actual drive modes, just one shifter mode. That is it. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Daily driver rating. Ola, I don't quite understand your comment. Um, what does it say? It says, the perverts by the girl, the girl, girl. So, okay, uh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> How was the reliability of your Passat? Well, we talked about it a little awesome. bit earlier, Parsa, but Alyssa, you owned it from like, what, 40,000 to 80,000 roughly miles? No, 40 to 70. 40 to 70, yeah, yeah. yeah. And nothing, right? I mean, very nothing. little to just oil, just oil changes. Yeah, yeah, that's all I did. Oil changes. And we did some brake pads yep. at one point. So just regular maintenance. Um, blah, blah, blah. And she had the, the inline five. Yeah, SE model. Ola said, nice car. What's the engine? This is a two liter turbo putting out about 174 horse to just over 200 pound feet of torque with a six speed auto transmission. Um, blah, 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 blah. Brower, does this feel similar to the Arteon as far as driving? No, the Arteon felt sharper. The Arteon was a little more engaged. This is more reserved, relaxed, easygoing style driving feel. Mohammed, the North American model of Passat is Mexican and there's a huge difference between the German version of it and this specific model. It's better to buy from Germany and then ship to the US. Does anyone know if you can do uh, European delivery for Volkswagens, because that would be awesome. We are caught up. Nice. You seem to be comfortable pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah, with a, uh, with a lot of experience, of, or not a lot, but just a decent amount of experience driving a lot of different kind of cars, as well as driving this thing for three years. And a lot of multitasking while I was driving during that time. <laughs> uh, this is just like, it's like I'm back. It's like I'm back in my old car. Except I, the steering wheel is so thin and it's so wiggly. <laughs> just makes you want to grab it? No. <laughs> Harsh, it is not a CVT. It's a six speed auto. My goodness. And do I think the VW Polo is good? I think it probably is. Unfortunately, we don't get that here in the United States, but I like the Golf. And I've heard good things about the Polo, and I've also heard good things about the Up, but um, 
Yeah, they make a car called the Up Exclamation Point. That's actually very cute. Yeah, it's a smaller Golf, and it's the model is literally up. That's really cute. Yeah. We'll have to watch the Top Gear episode on it sometime. Okay. Uh, Parsa says, for real? Interesting. Someone I know is looking at the Tiguan SEL and was concerned of the reliability. I thought older Passats were pretty bad, but thankfully her Passat was great. That's another thing we talked about, Parsa, is we know people who've had bad luck with Volkswagen reliability, but my general experience, kind of trying to take everyone's experiences into consideration is they're going to cost you a little bit more in terms of repairs, but they're not going to leave you stranded in the way that maybe a, a British car or an Italian car is going to. So yeah, you're going to pay a little bit more to play, but things are pretty solid in here. And the newer Passats, I mean, this is a two liter turbo that they use in all sorts of cars paired up to a six speed auto that they use in all sorts of cars. So even if something does break, parts are going to be everywhere. Yeah. Also the previous owner of my car, bought it in 2013, owned it for a three year lease. I picked it up in 2017, so it's probably in the lot for like nine months to a year. I can't imagine it'd be there longer than a year. But um, it was one, wait, wasn't it one owner? Yeah. Yeah, one owner uh, before I picked it up. And she just garaged it the whole time. She babied it, it was perfect. I picked it up. And so it was in really good condition. It was at 39, it was like, five miles away from being 40,000 miles flat when I think She probably had a 40,000 mile lease. Which is kind of fun. Um, yeah, so she probably did. And, um, so it was, it was, it was taken care of when I had yes. it. And I took care of it when I had it. I didn't garage it because I live in apartments. But, um. Yeah, no, it was, uh, it was, it was, it was good. All right, uh, blah, 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 John, this one was assembled. Uh, final assembly point was Chattanooga, Tennessee, but the country, uh, the engine was made in Mexico, transmission was made in Japan. 41% of the major parts came from Mexico, 39% came from US and Canada. So very much not a German car. Moran says, uh, surprising that the engine doesn't sound like a vacuum cleaner or a blender like the Kia on Hyundai's. That's funny you mentioned that because in, I'm sure you remember in our Elantra live drive, Alyssa was like, man, the uh, this engine just does not sound nice. One of the things that I first saw getting in this car before we started live drive was the disappointing cruise control change. I loved the cruise, the stock cruise control and the less stock in my car, it's just a little three-point switch off or always on or middle, which was like you could flip it once and it would turn on and it was perfect. So simple, I loved it. And I hate this cruise control system on the steering wheel itself where you have to set and then reset or whatever. I never, I, I know they're in every single normal car out there and I can never get it right. Um, but I love the stock cruise control and they took that out and I'm disappointed. <laughs> yeah, you have like one of the only cars that yeah. has a stock cruise control now. The only others are Toyotas, but they use a stock down low, like down in there. And, uh, I don't like them. Oh, I don't know, I haven't used them. But, right, no, they're okay, they're fine. But yeah, I'm, I'm, just, I'm disappointed. <laughs> yeah, for a while there, you and I both had that because my Boxster was a stock cruise control and then, um, whoops. Harsh, I didn't mean to, uh, did I, you block someone's comment? Yeah, I dropped the phone and then accidentally uh, hid, hid Harsh's comments. I do that all the time. Especially when you want to go really fast around a corner, I have to like turn my phone off <laughs> because I know even if I put it like down by my legs, it will uh, do something with the comments and I don't want to block anyone's comment on accident. Right. Um, so I'll say uh, NC Styles was curious if you use autopilot in the Tesla. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Um, Parsa said, uh, man, I wish I saw this sooner. Sorry for making you repeat yourself. That's okay. We repeat ourselves all the time in these. It's kind of just the nature What's of, he talking about? Uh, talking about reliability and stuff. Because oh. we talked about it before and he's asking me. Oh, oh, but, no, um, oh, yeah, we repeat yourself. Yeah, yeah. Can you drag race it with a Volkswagen GTI? If, I mean, if, if a GTI pulls up on us, we'll hit it, but we'll, we'll lose. So, um, do, 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 do. I, oh, Harsh asks, 
how exp expensive are the repair bills? Is it Lexus level, Benz level? No, it'll be cheaper than those. It wouldn't yeah. be too bad. Oh, unhide user on channel. Okay, there good. There you go. Um, the, um... Harsh, what, what? You, you, might, you might need to repeat your last message because I accidentally hit you um, when <laughs> I dropped the phone. <laughs> um, I will say the oil changes are very close to $100. Yeah, because you're so. doing a lot of synthetic oil. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, a yeah. premium synthetic. So those are pricey, but that, um, yeah, other than just doing a routine oil change and replacing our, my brake pad, we didn't actually replace them. No, we did. We did it. We did a set of rear brake pads. Yeah. Rear. Yep. Yep. Yeah. But that's pretty good. Yeah. So if there's anything else that you all would like to see or know, let us know. Alyssa and I are going to switch back here in a few minutes and then I'm going to play around with the e-brake a little bit for, uh, <laughs> just cause Moran is curious and now I'm curious. But yeah, no, this is just a good cruiser. It's, I would definitely recommend this car to someone who does a ton of highway driving. Absolutely. Doesn't like getting gas, just yeah. wants something cheap, fairly nice inside, basic, but like classy basic. Yeah. Yeah. I think in a month, even at my previous job, which was all highway driving, I would have to drive to clients' houses, which was a lot of driving. I think with that gas tank I had, which was 16 gallons, I was getting gas maybe um, two, twice a month. Every every two weeks or so, I'd have to get gas. Yeah. So, which is pretty, I think it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Which, if any, American offerings would the VW Passat compete with? Well, I mean, now that the Malibu is gone, the Fusion's gone, uh, I mean, this doesn't really compete with the Charger. The Charger's just so big and boaty compared to this, but it's kind of similar in some ways to the Charger. Fairly, like, simple but but nice inside and large. Yeah, closest to the Charger, I guess. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it has enough grunt to, like, get up to speed. It's not like it's stuck in its own way. Right. Yeah. Finding out that both Parsa and Mohammed are Persian. Oh, cool. Yes. They're, they're having a little bonding moment. Screw! $60,000 donation, we will roll it eight times. No, we won't. Or 30000 in the cash app. 30000 in the... No, we won't. Because when we roll it eight times, we're coming out with brain damage. No. It's not him. <laughs> I know it's just for fun, but that's just <laughs> ridiculous. I think it would be fine. We're in our seatbelts. It's consumer advice, man. Huh. I think it takes these bumps actually quite well. It I, really does. I, th I think it's probably 19 inch wheels, but I think they have, a good, miles. they have a good amount of sidewall and I think that just helps soak things up. Let's see. Actually, yep, 19 inch Alhoy wheels. Alhoy. Alright, 50 miles an hour on this one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it absorbs it quite well. We didn't bounce off the ceiling. From the previous reviews, would you recommend the Mercedes GLB versus any other competitors like the X1? Unfortunately, I have not gotten a chance to drive the GLB. I've driven the GLA and the GLC, but not the GLB. <laughs> um, I've heard good things, but the X1 is typically, the X1's usually the one you buy if you enjoy driving more than like features because X1's a little dated, but it drives really nice. The Mercedes is more impressive, but doesn't drive quite as well. Are these cops? Uh, they are some sort of, they're border and custom patrol. Customs and border patrol, actually. Put the camera down just so they're not like, hey. What you doing? They look like they've been eating a lot of donuts. <laughs> I guess in, uh, what did you say, borders? Border patrol? Border patrol. Mm -hmm. Border and customs control, you don't uh, have to chase a lot of criminals. Yeah, probably not around here. Yeah. Oh, good old Willow Run Airport. Can it be used as a midnight street racing car? Only no. if you like to lose. Yeah. 
But then again, if the cops show up, then they're not going to expect the uh, gray totally Passat not gonna expect to that. be part of the street yeah. racing. So if you like to blend in, if you like to drive fast uh, and not have anyone notice you, this is probably a decent car for that because, because in my opinion, when I had my car, I was like, people expect me to be a middle-aged white guy wearing a suit. Mm -hmm. They don't expect me to be a young 20-something girl going to work at her entry-level job. <laughs> They don't expect that. They just, they simply don't. So when you pass them in something, they're gonna be like, what? Right. Yeah, it'll be kind of funny. Do you want me to face this way or the other way? It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Parsha says, have you guys considered making shorts videos? I think your channel might grow with the shorts video trend going on nowadays. We've tried. We've, we have, I think about five shorts up right now. And I honestly think I've lost more subscribers than I've gained. Like we took it, we did an awesome short the other day. It was the, the rebel or the Ram TRX, like just going through huge puddles and making giant splashes and everything and sounding amazing and uh, negative one subscribers, like 400 views. So I, I, I don't know. <laughs> we'll continue to do some sometimes because it's it's cool to be able to show like little neat things about yeah. cars in a very short form format but it hasn't sparked the uh the, the subscriber boom that we were right. hoping for uh audi fanboy says all i can think about is someone donating thirty thousand right now <laughs> and then um doob -do -do -do. Yeah, people just want to see a little bit of uh, aggressive driving so we will do a launch if we can get some sort of donation in the chat so if we get any any sort of donation there we'll do do a little bit of launching but um we will at least try out the e-brake a bit cool 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 I'll let you have that Meet what my time. driving wasn't aggressive enough for you guys not 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 liberal enough use of the e-brake huh. oh man does it feel good Long time since I've live drive in a t-shirt. <laughs> Do another look at the car. Want to close up on your shirt? Oh, my car nerd shirt. Yep. Yeah. Handsome little thing. Yeah, I think so. I think this is the type of thing. If you were to name it, it would be a guy's name. Oh yeah, definitely. I think the color is a big thing about that, though. Yeah. Yeah. This doesn't scream like Sarah or whatever you guys name your cars, because you got, you all name your cars female names. Yeah. That's a funny, that would be a funny question. What are some, if you guys name your cars, what are some names that you've given to them and what are your cars? Yeah, I'd be curious about yeah, that. Yeah, that'd be cute. It'd be funny if uh, Moran for his GLS 63 that's tuned up if it had a name of like Becky or something like that'd that. That'd be funny. Or like Jessica. Jessica? A cat named Jessica. Yeah, the passenger seat has some manual mm -hmm. chair adjustments, seat adjustments, which Mine did too, but... Yours was an SE after all. Yeah. Is it a good getaway car for like robbing a bank? If As long as you can get away from the initial scene and they don't like see you right see you initially, yeah, right. you'd be yeah. off scot-free. You'd be able to blend in real easily if right. you kind of just like get away real quick <laughs> and then slow down right to uh, match everyone else's speed. Yeah. You'd be good. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's just a great car. What kind of car? I don't know. Some sort of Volkswagen. I don't know. I don't know. Just let him leave. Yeah. He, he won. <laughs> so if anyone knows how to disable this traction control, let me know. But uh, the only thing I can think, there's a settings menu that I can only view when I'm stationary. Maybe that has traction control Oh, yeah. On it. But other than that, I do not see a traction control disabled. Hmm. Well, let's be stationary for a minute. Assistance. No, nope, that's not it. Um, nope. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, I, I, I don't know. Hmm. Is it a good getaway car? I love that. Like for, I, dude, are you gonna rob a bank? <laughs> I mean, what don't are you gonna- Don't answer that, because that yeah. would become accomplices. Right. <laughs> How else are you gonna say? Yep. Sir, how did you get the recommendation to get this car to rob this bank? Well, there's this channel called Daily Motion. Yeah, because the, the cops are going to be asking them that question. Yeah. Now, if you can, when you do the e-brake stuff, will you let me know so I can grab something? Yes. Thank you. No. <laughs> not, not a fair enough warning. It actually has a decent feel when you load 
slowed it up a little bit. It, uh, it's not sporty, but it's not bad. It's just the steering's so light and vague that that kind of kills it. Yeah, that's what I think. Parse is asking if uh, traction control is in the settings info on the screen. Oh, like on I this thing. I checked. I think I checked, and it's not there. Is this a touch? Yeah. It is a touch. Navigation. What's that? Traffic. Ooh, nice. When the traction control does kick in, though, it kills it. Also, you can't be in the settings while we're moving. Is it? Are you sure it's not just those settings or these ones? I don't like it when cars do that. I know. I like the Tesla where you can just do everything except for watch Netflix while you're driving. Yeah. Which you could just have Netflix pulled up on your phone. <laughs> right, so. yeah. Look oh, at the red hair on this lady. Oh, so is... he's gonna get over. Is he gonna go on that? Oh, goodness. We're gonna keep over. Well, let's not kill... He's, he's not gonna be able to corner that thing at any remarkable speed. Neither no of them are wearing helmets. No. Yep. It's alright. There's probably so little in their brains to get jostled around that they don't need helmets. <laughs> they spent more money on the color of their motorcycle than uh, they ever would have on helmets. That's stupid. And see things I will make a good getaway driver. Hmm. Yeah, you probably would. You'd be fairly aggressive. Rich Hammond, uh, Muhammad saying Rich Hammond hates the Passat. And he said so in Top Gear. I guess that kind of makes sense. Probably because of the Dieselgate thing. I mean... No, it would have been pre that. Really? Yeah. Well... Probably not. Richard, Richard is a Richard. Nah, it's fine. <laughs> Audi fanboy gonna, says... Uh, I'm going to try to knee break around this corner if there's no traffic. Okay, thank you. that back which is good. Should I have, now? Nah, I'll do this. I thought I'd have the camera on the e-brake but everyone oh, knows what I'm not going to be able to with this car here. Got it. Maybe you're on the next one. Yeah. I think I should be able to up here. Getting it. Oh. <laughs> of course Mar Moran named his uh, cars. Yeah. He's got a TT? Oh, that's neat. I didn't know that. My, Unless it was a previous one. Well, he says it's TT GT350. Is that the oh, same? twin turbo GT. Oh, I thought it was an Audi TT. I was like, oh, All right, I like those. <sighs> I feel like the whole car is just going to get nerfed. <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> so it completely killed the power, but... It, you can slide it. I mean, if there were some snow yeah. or something, we'd really be able to have fun. The back kicked out. There was one time when Alyssa and I had only known each other for a few months, and <laughs> we were out with her friend, and it was winter, and I e-braked her Passat into a parking spot. It the was snow. the coolest thing yeah. I think I'd seen in a very long time. That's, you know, it's like Jeremy Clarkson said, it's, uh, you know, women women go weak in the knees for, for e-brake, handbrake turns. Yeah, and that's just because they're afraid for their lives. That's <laughs> that's why. But then, like, the cool thing about it is that he did it successfully, and it went in between the parking lines. That was cool. And my friend was in there. She was in the back seat, and she was like, oh, God, this is what's happening right now. Why did you do that? <laughs> and I kind of had the same, like, why did you do that? But that was cool. <laughs> she probably still thinks about that, like, my boyfriend and that handbrake turn into a parking <laughs> spot in my Jeep Cherokee. <laughs> he would probably tr attempt to do it in a truck. Yeah. And then work. and then not <laughs> do it well and then get yelled at. <laughs> okay. Moran's car names. Yeah. His GT350's name is Diana. Ah. Which I think is a very cute name. And his GLS's name is Lucifer. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. That's a great. Um, you had a car name idea for a pair of cars that we were gonna get. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, was, I was gonna get. We're gonna get a black Mustang and named it Blackjack, and then uh, some something else, a Tesla or something, and, and have it be Hookers. Some Blackjack and Hookers is a yep. Futurama reference. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's what we're gonna do. I 
I still think that's a good idea. I want to do that. Right, and for a little more context, I got I got fired from Car and Driver years ago, and it wasn't anything egregious, but they let people go and all the time. And uh, so I was like, fine, I'll leave and make my own blackjack and hookers. <laughs> Here we are. Yep. And we got Daily Motor, and yep. we need blackjack and hookers. And we have a white car. <laughs> yeah, that'll be hookers. Yeah. All right. Oh, I was saying, Audi fanboy thinks a good getaway car would be a Subaru. Because no one would expect it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's that, that's very fair. What, what would be... The most noticeable one would be like anything that's run down. I think, anyways. Yeah, it could super be like it's a clapped out like right. 1990 Honda Civic or something like that. Right. Uh, YBN Calvin says, I think the Mercedes Benz A45S is a good getaway car. Yeah, it would get you away, but it would also get you noticed. So it's like. Mm. Right, 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 right. He also says he'd call his car Burger. Ah, Burger. 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 <laughs> Body says my car's name is Ice Cube. Hey. Cause it's so cool. Ah. <laughs> what is your car? Are you interested? Hopefully an Audi. I feel like he sold this. It'd be kind of cute if it was one of those cube things. That oh, a Nissan Cube. Yeah. A blue cube. Yep. That would be. Nice that would be cube. really. White, you you should, know. if you have like a blue or a white uh, Nissan Cube, you should like put ice cube in your license plate right yeah Ooh, exhaust clip sure we can end with that if there are any other things you'd like to see let us know in these last few minutes but um did we catch up pretty uh, much yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> uh blah, blah 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 and cool yep exhaust clipperino coming right up Guys, this is pretty cool. What other car channel can you watch? Hold on, I'll shut up. Pathetic. Why? Did you mean to do that? Yeah, Calvin wants to see the trunk. Okay. Here it is. Also, Audi fanboy says it's a blue super. Oh. Well, at least it's blue. Yeah. And it's kind of cubey. If it's like an Outback or a Forester. It's probably a Forester. He sounds cool. A rectangular cube. This is a huge trunk. I bet you could do a body in here. It is a huge trunk. Oh. Let everyone know how tall you are. 5'10", and I'm actually decently comfortable. <laughs> I mean, like, relatively speaking. Um, ah! <laughs> oh yeah, these things go in. Yeah, you still could though. I mean, you yeah, can yeah. close it. They go all the way back to here because there's a cutout for them right there. So in case your getaway includes kidnapping somebody, ah, you can do it with the Passat. It's daily motor approved. Yeah, daily yeah, motor approved. <laughs> Neat. Well, uh, Calvin says, uh, hmm, could fit three bodies in there. Small ones. Yeah, if you're kidnapping children. Yeah, or if you didn't care about their comfortable... Yeah, or break their bones or something. Right. Gosh, we've, got, we've gotten really morbid. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Volkswagen Passat. This one's been fun, guys. Thank you yeah, all yeah. so much for tuning in. Uh, later this week, Friday, exciting one. GMC Yukon Denali Diesel. Oh, I am looking forward dude. to that. I so, let my brother know that. Well, uh, oh, Howdy Fanboy says it's an Outback. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Um, Ron says it sounds pretty decent for a four banger. I agree. Yeah, it's not too bad. Um, yeah. GMC Yukon Diesel next week, or not next week, Friday, 4 o'clock, and... Tuesday of next week at 4 o'clock. I will be on an airplane, likely. Oh, that's right. Or, or at least somewhere, so there will likely not be a live drive next Tuesday. Um, I might I might do one Monday. I'll have a BMW 430i, the super ugly one, um, but I doubt, because I'll be in Colorado for that, and then next week I'm driving the new Hyundai Tucson. So if you guys do have any questions about the new Tucson, let me know. I'll probably live stream when I'm in it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to. That's probably going to be Wednesday. 
So um, I might get to see the new Santa Cruz too. I'm not yeah. sure. I don't know. I don't think that's gonna be there, but maybe. The reason for all those is because you are on a press trip next yeah. week in the Phoenix, Arizona area. Tucson. Oh, Tucson. Yep. Cause oh, because then it because the Tucson. Tucson and Gosh. Tucson. Yep. Hyundai's flying me out there, so we're gonna go check that out. It's gonna be neat. And then um, will I be back Friday? We'll be back Friday. And I think we've got. I can't think of what we have next week. Um, we're coming back Thursday night. Yeah, 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 so we'll be back Friday. I don't know what we'll have, but we'll have something. Right, and we'll right. fill you in on Friday. And if you guys are interested in joining the Daily Motor members uh, account, you can see all of, is that correct? That's true, yeah. Yeah, you, you sign can up see become... all the, the lists of cars that are in the schedule. Yeah, members get to see everything we got coming up. So even for just four bucks a month, three or four dollars a month, you can sign up and see what our schedule is, so. And how far out does that go? Typically about a month or two. Okay. Yeah, yeah, whatever cool. we can. So you can also make recommendations and things like that and hit us up. So. Yeah. Uh, nice exhaust. Uh, Andrew, we already started the car with the hood open. Wasn't Andrew the Panda in there from the beginning? Yeah. Um, oh, he might have been saying thank you for that. Ah. Uh, uh, Audi Fanboy says his Outback is perfect for kidnapping people. Um, <laughs> can it be used for pimping out? Possibly. NC Styles says safe drive home, and Mohammed said no more Passat. Got all it. correct. So thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you on Friday. We're Charlie and Alyssa from Daily Motor, and as always, drive on.